especially when they don't work when they actually need it. So when the question is, how often do they not work? They never work when something goes down, except in Chelsea, where we actually saw what happened, not. So uh, it's standard. That is one of the things I'm looking out for. You know, Suddenly, the police communication system shuts down. Suddenly, their CCTV cameras shut down. Suddenly, they have a drill just before. There's a suddenly appears this patsy with an uh, Arabic sounding name, three names, Omar, Hossein, Subab, Subups, or whatever. And they all scream Allah Akbar, and then they blow themselves up. That is sort of part of this uh, fear among the pie. And when I say I'm so tired of this bullshit, it's because come on, change the theme at least. It's like watching the same Rocky movie 38 times. I know how it begins, I know how it ends. Spice it up. But they can't because they need a bad guy and they need to be the ones coming with the solution. So they're stuck and it's beautiful. Yeah. Uh, I also have a question for Ole. It was it's about the speak last year you had about Udhoi. Uh, you talked about there was more than one more shooters. Did you find them? Uh, you talked about that they were leaving country. There were some young guys on TV that said that they saw um, more than one shooter or here or something like that. Yeah. There are several witnesses describing, one of them the daughter of one of the police, uh, uh, high police chiefs. And it's everything from one to five. There were people on land, on the one truck driver, and among other people who heard shooting from different locations on the island. There was definitely more than one shooter. Then I ask the question. I've been three or four times to Oslo now, giving talks about this, describing the whole thing that I did here, which is shocking, I think. And I think it would be of interest for the families of these murdered children to find out the real truth. I did, on two occasions, I did one talk one day, then one day off, then another, t the exact same talk again, so that members of the, these families could come and hopefully get some kind of closure or understanding. Not one family has contacted me. Not one family appeared. Not one anything. I find that highly strange, very, very suspicious. And when you see the aerial footage of this island, when all of this happened, there was supp supposed to be some 500 teenagers hiding. Where are they? And then you have the... I'm not saying... I'm saying the strange things. The autopsy protocols, the number of dead that keep chaining up and down. People that were said that drowned then when the families received the body. It was, they were full of bullet holes. Uh, the math didn't end up two days from 80, I think it was 89. In the end, they managed to get it down to 77. We have these numbers that Johan keeps talking about, very sim symbolic and interesting for them. I don't know what's going on. I'm saying there was at least one of the witnesses that kept uh, telling his story. He was out there in the water and Bravi came. Actually, he was left-handed, not right-handed or the contrary, because it's not the same uniform. It's a Southpaw who's about to shoot him. But anyway, he said that he got shot. And in some interviews, he said, and then the bullet entered here and came out here. And in other interviews, he said it entered here and came out there. You would think that he, if anyone, would know how he was shot. There are things not matching up at all. I totally doubt that thing. And I met one of the people who were involved in it. There was this, uh, I don't know if I mentioned, I think so, that I was almost uh, arrested by one of a police officer that when we asked him to identify himself, instead of giving his, series, uh, his serial number, he said Delta 031, which is the unit that, do you remember the guys in the, in the rubber boat, the absolute joke? Where that they delayed it, delayed for one hour while these kids were being shot. When they finally arrived, he was the guy putting the handcuffs on Breivik. But the guy that was taking photos of being Breivik did not look like the guy who was arrested and inside the building. Not the same person. Not the same person at the trial. Not the same person on the ID. 
not the same person. What are we looking at? And there's a lot of digital manipulation of the court footage, you know, where I've, I don't know why they, they manipulate this. This whole thing with the, I don't know if you've seen that when he's doing this one. How weird is that? And then when we started pointing out that, then there come a l much better version where they put some effort into it. And, and it's like when he's brought into court, I'm sorry if I, but you asked, when Breivik is being brought into court, there's a lot of flashes going on, you know. But when you compare footage from different angles, the flashes don't, don't match. What are we looking at? And when you look at Breivik, when the whole court thing was going on, he was doing, you can see it's an actual loop of his movements. He was, when they were saying things that, uh, some, he was like, I put the loop there again, again, and again. That's live footage for you. What is going on? I don't know. There's something super weird in the whole thing. And nowadays, they can even manipulate YouTube videos in live streaming with the, uh, I don't know what it's called, but they put all of these things on the face of an actor. So he can do like this, and, and the, vi the YouTube footage will change so that you got, for instance, uh, George Bush doing the faces that the actor is doing in live. So this whole thing with Hi Hillary, what is that? What is this with the dog? We're looking at manipulated reality. I have no idea. I am confused, but on a higher level each year. Thank you very much. Remember, if you ask Ole, you will have a very... Uh <laughs> <laughs> okay, I think I will ask Tommy. Um <laughs> yeah, last year I asked uh, the panel and the audience uh, if someone could uh, give me a real footage of the planet Earth from abroad. And I um, have to say that I have not received any real footage from the planet Earth, even that we have satellites one million kilometers away from the Earth. So it's not your fault that you cannot give me a real footage. But I think the fault is that NASA, <laughs> and that's why the the, the question is for uh, Tommy, because Tommy, you mentioned something about that the CIA also uh, have science in their, um, how to uh, call it, in, in, in their program. Um, and and um, I think that, n that, that NASA give us only uh, computerized images of the planet Earth, of all the other planets, of all the stars and everything. I've, I right now uh, put myself into a, an astronomic uh, society and, and I'm looking in, in um, uh, telescopes. Te telescopes and things like that. Yeah, so I, I want to see it for myself. But uh, anyway, um, what NASA tell us is that we are, you have maybe heard this a lot of time, that, that we are tiny, tiny, small and we are one solar system out of a billion, and we are one galaxy out of a billion. <laughs> so we are very, very small, and we don't mean anything. And I think that's a big problem, that NASA is, 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 is doing this uh, kind of, of uh, science, and, and they, they give it to, to the scientists, and they repeat, uh, repeat, and repeat. So what is your opinion about science and the CIA complot and, and NASA, which I used to call the nazists? Hmm? That was a long and interesting question. Um, um, yeah, well, I've come to a point where I actually tend, I find it hard to believe any pictures that I haven't taken for myself. Um, and as Ole says, clearly we are being manipulated on a level that we almost can't imagine. Um, 
And I don't know how far to which extent this manipulation goes, but I get more and more open-minded as time goes by. Uh, because, as Ole also says, reality as we know it is so extremely absurd, you don't have to make things up. You just have to look at reality. So regarding NASA, reality is, it is partly based on Nazis imported from former Nazi Germany, uh, and it is a huge military, part of the military industrial complex in the US. And the big question that I have no answer for is, all these Apollo missions, all these uh, moon missions, did they take place? I do not know, because I know how we can get uh, manipulated. But I find a lot of sense in the thought that maybe it was more about learning how to make rockets fly horizontally than learning how to make rockets fly upwards. It might very well be. I mean, I just have to look at the stories, the fairy tale that the Americans have been told about Flight 93 around the 9-11 with the Let's Roll movement or look at the fact that uh, 100,000 people were, uh, were involved in uh, developing the nuclear bomb during World War II and no one knew about it. I really don't know, but I do know that I doubt very much the official story on every single subject that I've been taught in school until now. Okay. Yes, hello, my name is Ali, and first of all, thank you so much for being such in, like, inspirational uh, speakers, uh, because a lot of us out here wants to know the truth, just wants to know how it is, no matter how it is. So, um, and of course, thanks for not kicking me out on the first day. <laughs> um, my question is to whomever of you like feel that you may have an answer for that, or, or just maybe even uh, a a bigger question on. Um, a source of mine called uh, Dr. Stephen Greyer, who allegedly used to work in these underground, uh, what do you call them? Um, yeah, like underground bunkers and uh, like underground yeah. military bases. Um, says that he used to work with uh, organic metals and like, uh, like AIs uh, with like a neurocortex that is uh, of like a living uh, like organism. So like half human, half not, or like half organic, half inorganic, everything. So now with all of these like terror attacks and we all like know that we are getting bored and when are they gonna upgrade? Maybe, could this be the upgrade that the new terror, that the new enemy will come from like intergalactic? So the everlasting last enemy, what are your views on that? I don't know. <laughs> no. What I want to say is that they tried this uh, out of, out of uh, space threat when the Berlin Wall went down because they needed a boogeyman because suddenly the Russian and the Bulgarians and the Polish and East Germans, it didn't work anymore, so they needed a new one. So Reagan was trying with, oh my God, get that one, but we didn't buy into it. it w they tried, they did with it. Instead, they invested in all of these uh, uh, weapon systems and so on. So then in on stage came the Muslim terrorist instead. That has worked well for them. Now they started to spread it out because it's too obvious. So now they are running out of options again. So go for it, you know. But, I, but whatever the threat is, I would not buy into it. Just see it. F who benefits? Cui bono? Who benefits from me getting freaked out and then see the solution they offer and then don't get afraid because it's a joke or it's real and then we'll die but we'll die anyway let's die happy
And Johan, you have no take on this? I'm surprised. Yeah. Next question, please, and uh, try to keep them as short as possible so as many of you have a chance to ask something, okay? Hello, my name is Peter, and my question is for uh, either Tommy or Christopher or both. Um, as I understand it, NATO is an alliance of defense and um, not allowed to attack. To, and the, the new terror laws, they are um, um, forbidding support to, um, to, to terror organizations. So from your presentation, Tommy, I could understand that uh, it's indicated that NATO is violating these uh, codex by aggressions uh, around the world. So if it's established that NATO does this, uh, wouldn't it as a logical consequence of this, um, um, shouldn't you consider the legality of paying your tax? That's a good question too. Um, well, it's an established fact that NATO does not respect uh, international war anymore, international war laws, and uh, it's been so ever since the invasion of Iraq. So we don't need to theorize about that. NATO is doing attack wars in order to prevent something from happening, but that's not in the codex of what NATO should do. So they have definitely stepped out of line. On the second question um, <laughs> about paying your taxes, well, um, back in the old days, uh, I'm born in the countryside in Denmark, and I can tell you that much. If, if, if I were to give money to anyone carrying out crimes with my money, I would keep my money in my pocket. And um, it's a little bit hard to do so in a civilized country because we all more or less live on electronic money nowadays. So what the state gives, the state can take back again and that way they can create a circus where they automatically get back tax money from all these social um, uh, welfare money and every cost in society. It's quite a, uh, an astonishing thing. Um, you could say, I'm, I don't say that I disagree, you could say that uh, not paying your taxes is actually a duty when you're awake and aware of how this system rolls. Um, maybe that's my opinion too, but it's, it's a, at least close to. I don't know Christopher, would you like to add anything to it? Okay. Uh, yes. Some years ago, I was in Sydney, Australia, and a friend of mine was giving me a tour, and he knew that I loved the movie The Matrix, and suddenly we're standing in front of this fountain, and it was the fountain where the woman with the red dress showed up. It was real. People were walking really quickly back and forth, wearing black clothes. I was in the Matrix. That's how I feel coming to the Open Mind Conference. <laughs> Just wanted to tell you. But um, my question has to do for Christopher. And I saw the documentary Zero Days by Alex Gibley. And it was about the Stuxnet, Stuxnet virus. And I'm sure you're quite familiar with DARPA and artificial intelligence and all this stuff. Where do you see the future coming with the cyber warfare, Stuxnets. Stuxnets was like the first level, 20 times more sophisticated than the, than the most sophisticated computer virus before that. And it, they thought it was the US and Israeli intelligence creating this deliberately and attacking eventually Iran with it, with the centrifuges with the, for the uranium centrifuges for nuclear bombs. But um, what do you see happening with the next 
cyber warfare possibilities. They could shut down a whole society like that. Then you have a nuclear meltdown like what happened in Fukushima when there's no more cool, you know, energy to cool down the water, the plants, you know, you know, the rods and stuff. What do you see with this? Oh, that's a good, good question. Can you hear me? Yeah. Um, I go back to um, the cybersecurity in the United States at the Pentagon um, before 9-11 at that time was in the hands of an Israeli. The head of cybersecurity for the whole Department of Defense was a man named Amit Yoran. And uh, he had gone to West Point. He was an Israeli. And he and his brother had a company where they actually uh, would, would uh, infiltrate or get into the computer networks of European energy companies in order to mess them up, in order to show those companies that they were vulnerable, in order that the companies would then have to buy their software to protect themselves. And uh, that's where I think the threat is in the short term, that they will, 9-11 yeah, was also a uh, computer crime <clears throat> in which the um, American defense computers were completely hosed up at the time, not only with the games, but also you have to understand that the Israelis had infiltrated the, um, the computers and the FAA and the military to such a degree that they had their enterprise software on all the computers in the US government, which meant that they could, they could have super user access to all the critical computers as 9-11 happened. And in the short term, they have developed this capacity to infiltrate any computer system, enterprise software, energy companies, water companies, etc. And exactly like you say, there could be some sort of brownout, blackout, or crisis like Fukushima that they can actually create. Thank you. Hi, my name, is, my name is Jesper. I have a question for mostly Chris, but anyone in the panel, welcome to answer. Uh, a lot of people talk about martial law may be coming up in the States and uh, no election. Um, I have an idea that one of the goals is to take uh, the weapons away from private people. Uh, can you comment on that? Uh, am I right or completely wrong? Oh, that's what people fear, fear in America a great deal, of course. They fear that that's going to happen. So every time they do something like this, they go out and buy guns. Um, I, I, you know, they would be, if they're going to go to that extreme, if they're going to go to that level and, and try to uh, take away the Second Amendment, that would cause a revolution in America. And there's a lot of guns in America, so I'm afraid that, that would be a pretty bad idea. It's comforting with a lot of guns. Yeah, jeg hedder John Krøll, um, der bliver talt noget om, uh, en del om NATO. So, oh yeah, there has been, uh, the talk has been about NATO. So, um, by the way, uh, Anders Fogh Rasmussen is inviting to a gathering in the uh, Bremen Theater the 10th of October between 13 and, no, 11 and 13. And I suggest this could be an opportunity for some of us, hopefully a lot of us, to meet up and um, give him um, some words <laughs> on the way or um, maybe make a little some kind of um, action, what's it called? Um, activism. Um, so this is an open invitation, open um, suggestion to meet up. So if you, if you Google um, Bremen Theater and um, Anders Wohl Rasmussen, you will find tickets. Um, so, yeah. Anyone have a question? Or a comment? Yeah. Comments, comments? I have a, a, a small uh, um, speak in, in, in um, tipping point uh, from new world to uh, old world. Do snag up now in the shy, old, in, in, in shy letting. I, um, we, are, we have difficulties uh, hearing it up here, so we have to speak loud and clear. Okay, the tipping point from the old world to new world. What what can you see? It's it, 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 uh, it in shy. Can you see? Can you come a whistleblower? Is what? 
What, what gør, uh, hvad, hvad gør vi? Okay, hvad gør vi for at få den? Du kan bare på den, så kan jeg også for dig. Hvordan gør vi for at skifte den nye verden til den gamle og den nye verden? What do we do to reverse the process of the coming new world order that has been so pushed so hard? Um, this process is already happening and it's happening all over in Europe uh, and I see it all over Europe people are waking up in thousands and thousands and tens of thousands and it's not only anymore the traditional peace protesters running around just wanting peace on earth we're talking about capitalists we're talking about high military ranked people as i said in my lecture we're talking about policemen all over in society people have waken up the only reason that we think otherwise is because we watch too much tv and go out in the real world you'll you'll find a lot of people already waking up and uh And I, I can also, as a member of Open Mind Conference, uh, tell you that we this year have actually uh, two companies uh, helping us sponsor uh, the event, and that's why we were able to reduce the, the ticket price. So we are also experiencing <laughs> that. Well, um, this is a question from here. Over here. Um, this is mostly a question for Ole Damgo. Um, thank you very much for another interesting um, talk. Um, I wonder why uh, these people, whoever they are, who, is sta who are staging these operations, why do they bother doing all this staging? Why don't they carry out the, uh, the real attacks? I mean, it's not nice people anyway, and some of their operations are are very bloody and um, so why do they do some of this so much of this acting some people may uh, maybe talk one day and there are a lot of people involved I would say for fear out of women <laughs> mothers you do not mess with mothers that lose a child and when you see many of these operations where they've actually killed people You have all of these mothers that will not back down, that will breathe down your neck and make your life hell until they find out what happened to their child. Doesn't matter if that child was a grown up 62 year old, they will not back down. And I have from Chip Tatum, a CIA whistleblower, and who was also involved in, in these, that this is one of the, a problem. It's a major problem because it's messy. When you kill someone, you have all of these repercussions. So that's why I think around Boston, uh, around there, they came up with this whole thing with a crisis actor, a small little unit where everything is uh, an, a one and all pack, you know, where it's all there, transported in NATO planes or army planes from airbase to airbase as a rock tour on global tour, as a rock group on a global tour. Do you know, so that is why we see the same, the same, the same. It's like Pink Floyd. You don't expect them to play different songs in the different countries. It is the same being carried out with local backup. And it's just the same theme, the same theme, the same theme. We see people, the same people die again and again and again. We see the same person suddenly being the headmaster, and then it's the mother, and then it's the victim, and so on. So I don't know if you answered your question, but it's to keep it n not so messy. And I, I just want to comment on the last question what the, the, about the awakening, they say that the longest travel you can ever do is from here to here. And this is the one we have to do. The heart is so much, it's 6,000 more times more powerful than the brain. And this whole madness is carried out by very intelligent people, but with no heart. It's our task to go from here, don't buy into the crap and information overload flow, get in the heart, see what you can do with your heart. You know you've got a guiding system inside what is right and wrong. Choose love at every level. 
I'm not talking empty wimsy love. I'm talking fearless love and support for your human being around you, your neighbors, your friends, your whatever, and blow the whistle and expose the crap and make, let us make, turn this beautiful planet into this fantastic place it's supposed to be. And thank you. I actually have an uh, update question for the same. What about if we do some really attack instead? What will happen if somebody is doing uh, a real attack and kill Anas for Rasmus, for instance? That could be funny, <laughs> couldn't it? Just kill him. Give him the bullet hole in the head. What about that, Ola? What will happen if we do that? Here. Excellent logic, not. It is exactly what they want us to. You hit, they will squash us. They want us to, they want to stir the, stir the aggression. They want us to get aggressive. They want us to get violent because that will then justify them just pulling the whole thing. It's their game. Violence is their game. And if you kill him, put a bullet hole, that's a great idea. Somebody tried to, to recruit me as, as a part of a team of assassins where we will do a coordinated hit in one go at all the tops of the uh, Bilderberg group and so on and so on. Excellent idea. If you look at it logically, these few thousand people are messing it up for billions. So in one way, get rid of them. It just doesn't work like that. Because for one thing, karma, you mess it up big time. Also, when you look at revolutions, the people that make the revolution chop the head of the old ones, they become even worse after a few years. Yeah. We have to transcend this. We go the vi violent way, we go down the drain. We go the way of love and non-violence. Non Look at Gandhi. I'm sorry, Frank, I will just go. Look at Gandhi. <laughs> Gandhi was a man with no power, no title, no finances, no army. He dressed in a diaper and a stick. He did not have teeth, hardly. And yet he managed to unite a country like India. I mean, can you even imagine total chaotic country? How did he do it? By being a peaceful soul. Most of us long for peace. Most of us long for to be able to relax and just be in harmony and peace. And we're drawn into peaceful minds. So I say, purify your mind, purify your heart, get from here, stop the madness. This one is, is like in yoga traditions, they say the mind is like, a, I think, a, a bee on LSD stung by a scorpion. Toe. I mean, it's so out of control if you, don't, if you let it. So we need to get back into the heart and uh, follow people like Mahatma Gandhi, Martin Luther King. They show that it's possible, not easy, but possible. Okay. Um, uh, sorry, can I just add a, an observation to that? Um, I often reflect on what's going to happen when the current architects of the New World Order, all these grizzled old bastards that are running the show, eventually die off. Because you've got, you know, David Rockefeller is 101 years old, for God's sake. And Kissinger and Brzezinski and Prince Philip and guys like that are all in their 90s. So how long have they really got? And I wonder if there's going to be any getting through to the next generation that are going to be required to step up and replace these old guys. If there's any way of getting through to their humanity, if they have any left, and I know that Ule and others have made kind of open video messages to these people. And they've said that, you know, if you want to come over to the side of humanity, you can join with us because your days are numbered and your plan will not ultimately succeed. So I don't know if I'm being hopelessly naive in thinking there might be some optimism there, but it is something I reflect on. Well, I have a question. Um, it's about TTIP, T T E P. 
uh, Ncita, Ntisa, the new uh, secret, well, they are uh, still secret, uh, um, um, what? Uh, well, uh, and uh, it's a very, for example, yesterday or a few days ago, there were, uh, yes, yesterday, there were 25,000 uh, people in the street in Germany uh, to stand uh, against uh, CETA and, T and all these, uh, yeah, agreements, international agreements. And I would like to know if they are talking about it in the US, USA. Are they talking about this? Are people aware about what's going on? Um, well, I just came back from three months in the States, and I know that they're very concerned about this uh, uh, free trade with China, Asia increasing. And it's um, the free trade, what they call free trade agreements that they have hammered out since 1992, have been extremely destructive for the American society. Um, in 1992, I supported Ross Perot because he was against NAFTA. And, of course, Bill Clinton won the election. And in 1993, the Mossad man in the White House, Rahm Emanuel, used his extortion tactics to force Congress to vote for this NAFTA agreement that destroyed the American manufacturing sector completely, which is why we have so many people in America that don't have jobs anymore because they completely destroyed the middle class. And so the American people realize that any more of this free trade stuff is going to sink America. And so they're totally against it. Thank you. Great to hear. Hi, uh, I'm Johan. Um, I would like to share an experience uh, that is that during 9-11, uh, uh, I was uh, doing my best to uh, um, spread out information about uh, what really happened uh, on 9-11 and on uh, Facebook pages of uh, uh, Fox News, uh, CNN and BBC and New York Times and so on. And it, it was actually quite easy to, 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 to spread out a lot of information uh, right where the deception is going on. And I would su suggest that uh, more people did that, that, like just go straight to the, the media source uh, of deception and just plant real information there and and uh, then um, yeah I would, I would like to ask uh, for instance uh, Tommy Hansen uh, if, if you have a, a, an idea of how uh, all this information that we just have been witnessing this this weekend uh, what what could be the most efficient way uh, to, to, to spread it out like what, what is in your opinion the, the best way to to get it out to everyone yeah I would suggest to make a magazine, put it on the web, make a subscription system, make it translatable in all uh, countries, uh, and then you're uh, at least that's a start. Well, of course, of course, it's a sort of a joke because that's what I'm here for. Um, but but that, as I said, the process is already um, um, ongoing. Uh, some of the major or uh, steady subscribers to our magazine in Germany are the big media, so they really want to see what we're doing. And uh, uh, our website is being linked uh, from the commentary fields of all the big German newspapers. Now, uh, when we publish something, the readers go into the uh, comment fields and they say, hey, take a look at free21.org, there you see another part of the story. And those comments are not being deleted because that would be just too obvious, wouldn't it? So, again, w w there's all reason for optimism. The only reason we don't know how huge this development is is because we don't see it in TV. We don't get it in the, in the mainstream media. But I'm sure Christopher can confirm Everywhere and everywhere I go in Europe, and I make a lot of lectures in, in Europe nowadays, uh, I meet people who have woken up, who have been making questions and realizing this is a no-go. I don't know if you can... And I mean, that's, that's why there's hope at the end of this tunnel. We're almost there. Yeah, yeah great. 
Any comments? Uh, this is first to uh, to you, Johan, and to Mark. It, it was something you said about the four elements. You talked about the four cards and and that they have a, a clear distinction in, in relation to the earth and to to a plan, a bigger bigger plan. Uh, and I and then Mark had a a talking about schizophrenia or like the concept of telling people a word and it will be a trigger to release uh, something from a person. And it seems to be like they've gone for the four elements like water, air, and ground, and now they own that. And it seems to be the last one is fire. And do you think there could be a possibility that all this technology that suddenly appeared in like 20 years could be to actually split and divide these 6.5 billion people that is supposed to die, like giving them some kind of shock from the media or like from this that suddenly appeared because before it would be very, very hard to do all this pain to such a lot of group of people, you know? Uh, and the fire seems to be inside of people. This is why we do a rebellion or activism and all this. So I just wanted to ask you, do you, is there, has there been a, a long process plan to do this? Is this, is, as this technology has, has this been a long plan? I can give a really short answer to that. Yes, it's a very long plan. And yeah, you can use the, the four essences to analyze anything. So, but but that I cannot give a short answer to that. What they know is everything that I talked about uh, yesterday morning and all my video courses, all the work that I've done, they already know everything. They are on this the metaphysics, the alchemy, all the ancient insights, they know this and they use it against us. And the only way for us to break free from that, I think, is to start learning this practice ourselves in order to become magicians as well. But then white magicians instead of black magicians. Yeah, we can, we can talk forever, we can expose everything, but when we are still sitting ducks, when we are still not able to create our own reality, nothing will ever change. We have to change. We have to learn to create our own reality and that's the way to break free from this psychopathic world. Yeah, hi, my name is Asif. I just want to ask a question from Ola uh, because he was talking about knees or nice. Uh, uh, at the same time at a Turk airport, but at the same time of Nice, so there was a coup d'etat in Turkey. And does it have anything to do with each other to, uh, like when, uh, uh, at the time um, uh, the things were happening in Nice, the televisions were on 24 hours, there were news and stuff and bombardments of information or misinformation, but nothing at the same time was happening in, in, uh, in Turkey. In, in in Turkey, where the nothing was on the news, nobody was uh, Nobody knew what was happening there. So, does it have any connection with each other? Is it a kind of a dis It was a, a a play before, uh, or it was a play that they had started to, so the others couldn't see what was happening there, because uh, Turkey is a NATO member and. It ha uh, uh, he, it, it's a very huge thing for NATO uh, to happen such a thing, and uh, I just wanted to know your opinion or what. Yeah. Thank you. This summer I've, I've been quite busy. <laughs> so I know about this just by, but I, I have not put so much effort into looking because I, my, I was just, it's been like being up against Mike Tyson, you know, do, 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 do. And for sure, I would suggest that these are s very much connected, the things that I pointed out, extremely connected. And then in one of these countries that are playing the game again and again and again, this thing happened. So for sure, distraction, using, fear-mongering, was there a coup, was there not, was there... I don't know. I... Uh I can, uh, global research have covered that, and I followed that uh, campaign uh, with the Turkish coup. And there, there were several uh, explanations, but the explanation I think they ended up with 
was that Erdogan, uh, via actually his work together with the CIA, were able to make a kind of uh, skin coop uh, in order for him to get uh, uh, some of the officers, some of the uh, high degree military people who were not interested in, in uh, ground troops, Turkish ground troops in Syria. So after the coup, the Turkish actually have now have ground troops in Syria. And that is combined with uh, the, and also with, with ISIS and, and the places they have occupied of Turkey is combined with where they would like to have a gas and an oil pipeline down to um, uh, Yemen or, or in, in that area, because Putin is now the supply of energy to, uh, to, uh, to Europe, and uh, the powers that be would actually like uh, Saudi Arabia and the countries around there, the friends of America, to be the supply in order to take away the, the, the financial muscles from Russia. So, uh, so I believe uh, that, that what we have seen in Turkey is, is, a, is a, yeah, a coup d'etat where he can get rid of every enemy he has in order for him to make a, yeah, you can say, a greater Turkey or so. so uh, <coughs> Just a very short one on that. Um, I can confirm that uh, shortly after the coup, some of the major coup plotters fled to two countries, Saudi Arabia and, guess it, yes, Israel. So you figure it out yourself. Yeah. Okay, I think we have uh, yeah, one or two questions more. The question is for Mark, it's on behalf of a friend. Uh, it's about Leonard Cohen. Uh, does the name mean anything? And, um, and especially uh, the number called The Future, if you would talk about the lyrics. Leonard Cohen, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, I don't know much about the guy himself, but I know the song that you're talking about. And he's taking the position of uh, the devil, right? Or this demonic entity, and he's talking about how things are playing out in this reality. And they're very cutting, incisive lyrics that pretty much sum up the dynamic that we've currently got. So uh, I don't know what more to say, really, other than it's a very potent record and it shows quite a lot of knowledge of uh, what's currently going on. He's in, in a position to, to know all about it, I would suggest. I'm sorry I can't add any more on it. The future, Leonard Cohen, yeah. Hello. Uh, thank you to all of you free spirits. I'm so grateful to be here. I have a question uh, for you, Ole. Um, it's about the crisis access. Yeah, sorry. Um, I have seen that the CIA uh, was seeking for crisis access. You were talking about um, a kind of global tour. So is it the same? I think of uh, Krutzen here in Copenhagen. Is it the same actors that kind of goes on a tour? I know you did some research. Once again, I'm not, do I'm not the one doing it, so I can't say for sure. But there is a, a uh, when you look at the things that is carried out in the US, I feel there we're looking at one band Walk, you know, it's the same people appearing as uh, as um, parents of some of the mem uh, of the, the victims in Sandy Hook. Suddenly, he is in the the SWAT team and uh, all of these things. It seems like in the U.S. they're using one group. I would suggest that in Europe, especially after uh, that, I'm aware of uh, Charlie Hebdo. There was there's been a very strong uh, Israeli involvement or Mossad involvement in Europe and the theme is there's there's a l totally different PSYOP involved where they use a lot of historical events uh, referring to the Second World War, the liberation of the concentration camps, there's all this symbolism in it and uh, so on. So I think we're looking at a, a, at a different, it's like maybe two, two or three uh, rock bands with, but with the same manager. I would suggest. Was that an answer? 
I have a question. I'm working with this team, Open Mind Conference. And yesterday we have a big attack hacking our web server and we have been uh, receiving letter. We should not do this, telephone calls and all this. And I can see a red line that are called Israel, Zionist. How can they get so much power? And why is people so afraid to talk about it? Every time I talk a lecture about it, people think I raped them, I raped the mine, because they don't want to hear about it. And also when we saw the lecture with Max Eagle, where he was, I saw 200 people sit and watch the floor. They did not want to receive the information. What can we do? Maybe Chris, because I know you are very bold to go out doing your work. Thank you a lot. Yeah, thank you. That's a, that's a very good question. Um, I would point out, like in the last week, I was in Brooklyn, New York, and there was, a, there was an organized mob out there. They were Jews for racial, pure, racial freedom, something like that. JR. But in any case, this group is funded by a group called Federation, Jewish Federation of New York. Um, that's one of their main sponsors. That is the funding arm of the state of Israel. And so they are actually um, organized Zionist mob who was sent out there on the streets of Brooklyn, and they were spitting in the faces, they were swearing at the police, they were being very rude, and they were trying to shut down the venue. And they wound up threatening other people who were going to use the venue in the future, costing the venue over $55,000 in, in revenue this year. Now this is gangsterism. This is Zionist gangsterism. The only other place I had a problem like this was the ADL called out a little group in Tucson, Arizona last winter, did the same thing, stood outside. And I told the people, come inside, listen to the presentation, and we, you can have questions afterwards. They said, no, we're not here to hear about 9-11 truth. We're here because you're a Nazi. Now, this is just pure nonsense. But the thing is, is that my presentation is not about your ethnicity or your religious background. I don't care what ethnicity you are. We're talking about a crime. We're talking about a crime that changed America and changed the world and has taken this world from a relatively free and, and peaceful state into a constant state of war. Let's talk about what this is all about. But obviously the Zionists don't want this message, message to be heard, and they particularly don't want this message to be heard by Jewish Americans, because they want to hold those Jewish Americans in this kind of shtetl, this ghetto of the mind, where they, they, they think that Israel does no wrong. Israel does a lot of wrong. So it's, it's, not a, it's not an ethnic thing, it's organized mobs, and the organized mobs that do this, that call your venue, that call, give threats, that send emails to Israel, from Israel, are coming from Israel, or they're coming from Zionist sources in the United States. They shut down a lot of venues in the United States simply by threatening business and threatening them, outright threats. And it's gangsterism. It has to stop, and we, we, we cannot buckle to that kind of nonsense. Thank you. I, 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 I can also add that the uh, Open Mind Conference re uh, received uh, all the sponsors, which is on the Open Mind Conference homepage received uh, letters from a uh, Zionist organization in New York, which have links to Ford Foundation, Rockefeller Foundation. Have, uh, so so uh, even this year, and uh, most probably because our friend Christopher were coming, but we were uh, in the Open Mind Conference agreeing that we will not duck for this because we, we need to face the beast. And, uh, and yeah, shit happens then. I'd just like to uh, add a quick point, picking up on the uh, comment about the live stream being hacked. The fact that uh, certain parties would bother to do that shows that they're shit scared uh, of truthful information getting out there. And I've been watching all these talks this weekend and thinking about the impact of all this information getting out on the mainstream TV. Can you imagine if all this stuff we've seen this weekend were to be broadcast on BBC or Fox or whatever the Danish equivalent is, it's almost worth bum-rushing one of these TV stations, barricading yourself in and doing the jail time that it would take just to get this information out. And if that ever happened, the world would change overnight because people would not be having it. It's just a case of people getting access to this information on a large enough scale. 
So we just have to keep doing what we can to get the information out. I know it's difficult, I know we face resistance, but at some point we will get there. Just think about what would have happened if this stuff had been broadcast on TV. They're clearly scared of it, so all the more reason to keep on. Do you know Voltaire? He said many, many years ago, this is such a famous quote, to find out who controls you, find out who you're not allowed yeah. to criticize. Yeah. It's just like uh, Christ Christopher says, I don't care if you're Hindu, Sikh, Muslim, Danish, Swedish, green, blue, yellow, whatever. We're looking for criminals that are messing it up for all of us. Yeah. That's it. So, Tommy, now we have so many who are so aware, you said thousands, how can we get together and unite and unplug? Because I think if we all unplug, everything will just go down. And we have something that they fear. We are many, we are more, and we also have love. And we can share all and get united. So how can we get united, all of us? <laughs> That's easy yeah, well, um, yeah, that's an easy one. <laughs> yeah, um, no, it, it, that's really what it's what it's all about, and uh, I totally agree with uh, what Ulla says about moving yourselves from here to there, and um, as I said, this is happening. I live personally. I live in Portugal on a hillside. Uh, surrounded by good people living on the same hillside with my view to another hillside where good people live and live in harmony with themselves, with nature, with the laws of nature, with respect for all this wonder that we have in the world. We don't need medical industry, we don't need anything at all, and we, none of us, actually do. But we are brought into a state of mind where we think civilization is all about wearing the right kind of clothes and uh, doing the political correct things. But again, I see it. I see it in Germany and I see it definitely in Portugal. Hundreds of small communes have occurred overnight where people from all countries join themselves, find together, settle, and say, no more of this bullshit. I want to get out of this consumerism. And it's doable. And on that day, we will all meet, because that's where we all want to go. And we will, we will go there. We're, we're in the process. It is exactly happening all over Europe. And people are, have had it. Uh, we have, and that's, we have the right to say, this is it. I've had it. I don't want this no more. So don't go shopping. Don't buy things that are packaged uh, for some reason. Don't buy any meat that hasn't lived right on your doorstep. Just go get normal. That's the way. Sorry. I can also uh, add something, um, as men some of you know, I try to follow the economy very hard. And uh, the future looks very, very bad if you look at the economy. The, the debt is gigantic. We have Italian banks, uh, which is nearly collapsing. Deutsche Bank's shares are 90% down. We have 700 trillions in derivatives, which is bets, which in so, so the elite is trying to keep people happy at the moment by making fantastic, gigantic trillions of debt just to keep the system going. Because the debt, when it falls apart, and it will, maybe this year, maybe next year, but very soon, and then people will not be happy. And what we should see ourselves like is that you have been doing a lot of studying listen to a lot of, of these beautiful persons here and many other. You are the guides when this happens, in order to avoid any violence, in order to work for group 
So, so the reason why you are studying as I see it is that we are studying to be the guides when the shit hits the fan, because it will. That's my opinion. I just want to ask, you know, like, little Denmark, you know, it's not like Britain, you know, or America. Little Denmark, how can it be so bloody corrupt? You know, what's happened? You know, how far does this go? Is it the Prime Minister that knows? Does the Queen know? Who bloody knows what's happening? Who's given permission for people to come in and terrorise the Danes? Who is given the permission? You know, is it the Prime Minister? Was it Hela? Is it Lars Luger? You know, is it the Queen? Does she know? Who knows? Are they Satanists? Is there any evidence for why this is happening in Denmark? I can, I feel confident every single one of them know. Every single one of them know. And you have to have no moral in order to make a career in politics and top economics today. Um, there are even scientists saying that uh, among top politicians they have a, we have a higher rate of psychopaths than uh, among the normal population. And I mean, look at the world, could make some sense. But sure, yes, they know. So they choose to go along. That's why I have no respect for the Danish parliament whatsoever they can be so green and left-wing and understanding. They are, every single one of them are corrupt people who should be ashamed of sitting there and just making along. But it's a very nice life. They get very well paid. They get a, a travel. They get to travel uh, around the world. So that's why they do it. That is why it is so widespread because there are people who have no limits. So. Time is running. Uh, I think we have uh, time for, for one more question. So who will have the last question? There's uh, one. Okay. Yes, I heard about that you all or someone else uh, avoids paying taxes. I want to know how can we avoid paying taxes as well? Or, or just, you know, how, how can we avoid like, like buying into their reality? Like through taxes, I want to be done with taxes. I, I will have to take credit for that one. Um, and actually you can do it uh, because you have to remember the taxes is not only a, a question of how, what you pay in taxes, in normal taxes, is also a matter of, in Denmark, 25% uh, uh, taxes on every bloody thing, single thing you buy. So one thing you definitely can do. I remember a few days after 9-11, I suppose it was like that in every Western country, I really got sick because our uh, prime minister went on national television telling us that we now had to get back to consuming to fight against the terrorists, to tell the terrorists that we, uh, they couldn't destroy our values. And he did so because the country was almost on its knees. Because in the first days after 9-11, all the good Danes had other things on their mind as to go in their local shopping center. It is so vulnerable, this system, that if you stop consuming, they will stop ruling. So that's a good way to go. I can add to this. Um, only legal persons are obliged to pay taxes. In my opinion, it's unlawful to pay taxes. Think of the difference between a legal person and a human being. I think there's the answer. But find your own way, be creative. I've not paid taxes for many years, and I'm still here. Okay. Um, 
before we uh, end, I have uh, made this certificate, so I personally want to say thank you to everyone, and you can do the same. So, Joanna, thank you very much for coming. Thank you very much. Yeah. And Christopher. Thank you. Yeah. Christopher is a real warrior, huh? yeah, yeah. And you too, Tommy. Thank you very much for coming. Yeah. 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 And again, Johan, thank you for coming. And Mark, thank you for coming. Yeah. Thank you. Don't get up. <laughs> thank you very thank much. You. Yeah. yeah. And Ole, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it. Uh, again, with, even with all the difficulties we had to arrange this, uh, it has been a marvelous conference and you have been really a marvelous audience. Uh, I, I hope you will talk to all your friends and tell them that this is experience. Did you also feel that the energy in this room the whole weekend have been tremendous? Yeah. And also, isn't fantastic people like this? We are not even paying them. We are paying the tickets, hotels for some, other stay privately, and they still go around in the world, tell what they have come up with, uh, research in order to educate us, for us to go out and educate others. So, as we normally do, yeah, you know, normally I put up open mind closing ceremony and then we are just standing up here. So, I didn't do that this year because I think maybe that was something from a Catholic church or something. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I think everybody of you could be interested in having the photo opportunity with the open mind team and uh, all the speakers. So, can we see all the open mind people up here? <clears throat> So one, thank you for coming this year and see you again next year and I want to congratulate my fantastic team here for a great job. Thank you.
Um, when we, we, we have to take everything apart, uh, if some of, of you want to, to help us, it would be nice, uh, but at least uh, take uh, all your garbage uh, and uh, this year, please let the chairs stand because uh, last year was too much chaos and we learned <laughs> from it. But thank you for coming and have a good trip home. Hope to see you all next year.